I'm a neuroscientist and I'm really interested in how our brains allow us to do everything that makes us what we are. Everything that we do when we think, feel, see, smell, hear, laugh or love, all of those things are dependent on our brain and I really want to understand how that works. That in future will allow us to understand what happens when things go wrong. But right now we're at the stage of just trying to understand the basics. For me, one of the most fascinating things that we can't explain about humans yet is how we can create this kind of connection that we get when we do art together, when we tell stories together, when we play music together. And that's exactly why I wanted to study neuroscience. I wanted to understand the things about humans that we can't put numbers onto. We know that brains are made up of a lot of different kinds of cells. So neurons are just one of the many kinds of cells that make up our brain. And when someone studies a whole stream of neurons talking to each other, they're studying what we would call a circuit. So at the Sainsbury Wellcome Center, we use a range of techniques to try and understand how these circuits work. But that's a really complicated problem. The brain is made up of around 86 billion neurons. That actually means that there's around 50 to 100 trillion connections in the brain. Now those big numbers are really hard to kind of take on board, but you can think of it as there are more connections between brain cells than there are stars in our galaxy or leaves in the Amazon rainforest. Here's the difficulty with studying neuroscience the way we're doing it now. Imagine that you are at a party and for some reason you want to understand all the conversations that are going on at this party, but you're only allowed to follow one person and you're only allowed to write down one word from every conversation that they have. Are you gonna be able to recreate all the conversations from the party this way? No, so this is the level that we're at in terms of our neuroscience techniques. So normally brain tissue is colorless. It's really hard to see which neurons are connected to which other neurons. In fact, it's pretty much impossible unless you do something special. Now we can use some techniques in the lab which allow us to do that. We can dye some neurons which allows us to see where the connections go. We can make some neurons flash when they become active so we know when they're talking. We can use electrodes to record the electrical messages they're sending each other. And we can also look at behavior in a whole organism. So for example, I could look at your body language when you're talking to somebody you find attractive. And then we also work with the Gatsby Computational Neuroscience Unit. And what they do is they take the ideas that are coming out of the experimental work and the cellular work, and they try to implement that in computers. And so these end up becoming really, really powerful tools in the computing world. It's actually really important to realize that you do have a lot that you can contribute to neuroscience. The more people that we can get involved in neuroscience research, the more powerful our understanding will become. I find it's hard to navigate the world sometimes. There's no manual for how to use our brains properly to do that. We all struggle with certain things and we all have different ways of seeing the world. But I think those differences between us allow us all to contribute something unique to the world. If you want to find out more about what we do at the Sainsbury Welcome Centre and also help us understand our brains, then please go to our website or click on the buttons you'll see on the brain in just a second. <laughs>